Hi everyone, if you're new here, my name is Jamie and I post videos every Sunday. Today I'm sharing the different ways that I've adjusted my budget and how I've tweaked my spending because of these rising costs of living. And I just wanted to first acknowledge that it is a really tough time for a lot of people and people are feeling the pinch. And you might be realizing that you're just not able to save or invest as much as you could beforehand. Whatever you're feeling, you are not alone in this feeling. And I hope that this video is helpful to you. So personally, with these costs of living continuing to skyrocket, I have evaluated my budget and looking at how I've been spending so I can think about ways to spend smarter. The biggest change that I've implemented are doing my grocery runs at Aldi. Okay, I love Aldi now. I love the shopping experience. I love the special buys aisle, even though they can be a bit of a trap. But my grocery bill is significantly less when I shop at Aldi. So now my husband and I will start at Aldi, we'll get everything we can at Aldi, and only if we can't find it at Aldi, then we will turn to Kohl's or Woolies. Shopping at Aldi has been such a game changer, I have not looked back. I've even found my favorite barista oat milk at Aldi, and it's so good that I don't even think about Oatly anymore. Oatly, who is she? Who is she? That's how good it is. Another reason why I like Aldi is because there are less choices. I know that sounds odd, but sometimes with so many choices at like Kohl's or Woolies of different brands, I can become very overwhelmed and Aldi just kind of narrows it down for you. It's great. And you only have a few options to select from and I feel like that really helps me and it helps me get my shopping done faster because I'm not like looking through so many products and just like bang 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 it's so efficient so if you don't already shop at Aldi get on it and let me know about how much you save because I am definitely feeling the difference compared to when I used to shop at Woolies or Kohl's. Another big change that I implemented was to change my telephone provider. So I was previously with Vodafone for years and years and I was on their $45 red plan and that gave me 40 gigs of data and also unlimited calls and texts but that is very standard now. And they had notified me earlier this year saying they were going to change my plan to be like $50 a month. So they were increasing it by $5 a month and I would receive an additional 40 gigs of data. And when I got that notification, I was kind of thinking to myself, 80 gigs of data, I do not, I don't need that much. And I'm not thrilled about spending an extra $5 a month for something that I absolutely do not need. So I feel like that was a huge trigger for me to think about other telephone providers out there. And after I did a lot of research, I had found that Moose Mobile had a lot of positive customer reviews at the time of my research. And I went through their process, I signed up online, I got the SIM card mailed to me, and I was able to keep my mobile number, which was my biggest concern. And the whole setup literally took me like three hours. I you know, lost service for three hours while they were doing their magic and swapping my number from Vodafone to Moose Mobile. Moose Mobile also uses the Optus network, so I get better coverage anyway. And I honestly don't know why I put it off that much. I had always thought that it would be like such a big operation, that there would be issues in terms of keeping my mobile number. I don't know why I had like these myths stuck in my head. Um, and I wish I had done it sooner because I definitely could have saved quite a bit. So if you're looking at ways to cut down on fixed expenses, and by fixed expenses, I mean things like your rent or your mortgage or your bills, I think changing your telephone provider is a great way to save. Another thing I'm more mindful of these days is avoiding takeaway lunches when I'm working in the office. It can be extremely tempting because I work in the CBD and there are so many food options, but it's definitely more of a rare occasion for me to buy lunch and I definitely just 
bring in my leftovers or bring in something that I've prepared that I can easily heat up in the kitchen. And if I do have to buy out, let's say I was really exhausted the night before, I will opt for cheaper options like sushi for $7.50 or soup and a bread roll from Seoul Origin for like $9.50 or a chicken teriyaki lunchbox for $10.50. You see how the <laughs> surprises are memorized in my head? Those are basically like my three go-to because I don't feel too bad in terms of the cost because there are definitely like lunch sets that are around 15 to 20 bucks I found in the city and that can definitely add up especially when it's just for the purpose of like making sure you can get through the rest of the day and it's not so much like the experience of having lunch with a friend let's say. I do still have my morning oat latte that I buy. It's something that sparks too much joy for me to give up and also there's a big social element in terms of the coffee run with my colleagues so I have not given that up but I do ensure that I don't buy more than one takeaway coffee or takeaway drink. I'll usually have like an instant coffee or or a tea that I'll just make in my office kitchen if I need another hit of caffeine in the afternoon. Similarly, I've cut down on takeaway in general and eating out. One of our new mantras, my husband and I, we really focus on no takeaway during the week. So for instance, we might still like go out for dinner with our friends during the week, but we have stopped getting takeaway. And this is really to just cut the urge of getting takeout just because we're too lazy to cook. That has made us a lot more motivated to get organized and meal prep on a Sunday evening. So the laziness further down the week doesn't kick in. Although this isn't a change in my budget, but I just wanted to say that I do not spend money on meal delivery services like Uber Eats. I've talked about this in a previous video, but I do find it to be like pretty crappy value because a lot of the times the servings are less, the qualities are less, there's so many additional charges, sometimes your food gets lost and it just, it's just a headache. I know Uber Eats can be a really tempting option, but I would rather spend that money and save it for let's say like a dinner out on the weekend for a date night. So in terms of like surviving and getting through the week, I would just rather have my leftovers. Another change that I'm implementing is changing up my fitness routine. So you might already know that I'm a big reformer Pilates girly. You probably have heard me talk about it before in my vlogs, it's probably getting annoying. But I'm changing it up because I'm not with a Pilates studio at the moment and I have no plans to join a Pilates studio in the foreseeable future. And what I have been doing is doing different trials at different studios because the trials are such good value. I've done trials so far at like KX Pilates, S Reformer Pilates, Self Glove Club, and I recently did the KX40 challenge, which was 20 classes in 40 days at KX Pilates. And I really did that because it was such a good deal, but I have no intention of joining a Pilates studio as a permanent member right now because I feel that right now my fitness goals have shifted a little bit and I want to get more cardio in because my resting heart rate, she's concerning. Anyway, I have joined Revo Fitness. It's 10 bucks a week and then you can also have access to their Reform Pilates machines for an additional three bucks a week. So now I'm spending 13 bucks a week for all my fitness needs, including Pilates and cardio. And I feel like I'm at that point where I've done so many classes with instructors that I know how to use the machines on my own. I am comfortable with them and I don't have to worry about getting injured because my form is incorrect. That is definitely a big saver in my budget. When I was a permanent member, when I was in Melbourne, my Pilates membership was 55 bucks a week. And that was a special deal because I was one of their original members. So if you just compare 55 bucks a week to 15, I mean 13, 
That's, that's pretty good. That's pretty damn good. Honestly, think about whether that is something that you might want to implement. You might want to change up your gym and look for a cheaper gym option. These are just some ideas for you to brainstorm. Another change that I've implemented is being more proactive when it comes to looking out for special deals and offers. So for example, I really wanted to go to the Lightscape exhibition in Kings Park and I saw they were offering off-peak tickets. So they were slightly cheaper if you went on a Wednesday night. So that is exactly what we did. And before then, we also went out for dinner at a restaurant that offers two for one burgers on a Wednesday night, which was perfect. This was Henry M's in Manning, by the way. And another example is using my health insurance for discounted movie tickets for movies that I really, really want to see in the cinema. Those are things that maybe I couldn't have been bothered about before, but I'm a lot more mindful now because I'm like, ooh, what, where can I save? And what are the specials going on? In terms of social activities, I think about budget-friendly ways that I can spend quality time with my friends. So for example, my best friend Nancy and I will often go out for like a morning coffee and a walk because that is so cost-effective and it's budget-friendly and it's good for our health. And I'll also like host a games night with friends or family. That is a really good way in terms of saving money and people will just bring snacks and I'll just offer drinks and it's really not too much on the wallet. And as you might've seen in my vlogs, I regularly invite my friends over and I'll offer to make them like a matcha or a hojicha latte for them where we can just catch up in my home. That is always really lovely. I think sometimes we always feel like we need to like go Go out and have an expensive brunch or go out for an expensive dinner and drinks but that's really not the case there are so many ways that you can still spend quality time with your friends and not have it like destroy you inside because you just spent like 35 bucks on brunch another example that just came to mind is having like a home paint and wine session I saw someone do this in their Instagram story and I really want to host one when the weather is a little bit warmer and actually use like my outdoor or space. I think with these social activities, it's also really helpful to just be open with your friends. Like, hey, rising costs of living, want to go for a walk. I feel like you don't really need much more explanation. It's really fun to be able to be a bit more creative in terms of thinking of activities. And I'm sure you can make it an activity where you organize and host it, but your friends might chip in in terms of bringing snacks, you know, like the opportunities are endless. Another example that I just thought of was like you know organizing a book club and having it as like a wine and cheese night at home in terms of entertainment subscriptions i only pay for one platform at a time but i will have to caveat that my mother-in-law still lets us leech off her netflix so we're very grateful but besides that we only pay for one platform i just alternate between the different streaming services based on which tv show i want to watch so for example i was on hey you for one month because i wanted to binge watch all seasons of Vanderpump Rules, which I did, by the way. Comment below if you watch that show because I need people to talk to about it. And we're also watching free to air TV quite a bit. My husband and I have been watching MasterChef and we are so behind, so no spoilers, but that is a show we're definitely enjoying. And there are a lot of great shows on SBS On Demand, which is also free. You just have to put up with the ads, but that's okay. And I do have a TV show recommendation for you that's available on SBS and that is called Why Women Kill. I know, it's a very mysterious and interesting title already. <laughs> I think this is a great one to monitor, only having one streaming service that you're paying for at a time. I did have a work colleague before who had like a little spreadsheet of her favorite TV shows and when they were coming out and it was like cross-referenced with the streaming service and all of that and that's some next level stuff, but that will save you money. Another change that I've implemented is to purchase gift cards and this is a perk 
that I have because of my gas provider. So I will log onto their website and I will purchase gift cards, for instance, like Kohl's gift cards, and they offer like a two to 4% discount. So for example, using a gift card instead of my credit card, I can get my $100 grocery bill for 96 bucks, or 98 bucks. I know that seems like such a small number, like what's the point? But I really feel like that does add up and it's so easy to do that it's kind of like, why not? Another thing that I've done with these rising costs of living is to also really think about how I can expand my streams of income. That is a whole separate topic. So if you'd like me to talk about that, please let me know in the comments. Anyway, that is a wrap on this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe as it really supports my channel. Thanks so much and I'll see you next Sunday. Bye.